to class online school. Today we are taking basic science. And in our class today, we are going to talk about sanitation stroke cleanliness. We're going to use the two, the, the two words simultaneously. And in the course of today's study, we'll talk about the meaning of cleanliness or the meaning of sanitation, method used in sanitation stroke cleanliness, then the importance or the advantages of sanitation and cleanliness. Why I use both is because in some exams, they use the word sanitation. And in some exams, they use the word cleanliness. Anytime you see both cleanliness and sanitation in your basic science question for junior secondary classes, always know that they are telling you to explain what sanitation is or what cleanliness is. So that is why I used same words, both the cleanliness and the sanit uh, sanitation together. Now let's go to our class today. We want to define or explain what cleanliness or sanitation is. Let me try to explain what sanitation is. Sanitation has to do with cleaning our environment, cleaning our home, and taking care of our body, making sure that our body is clean. So, sanitation has to describe three aspects of cleanliness. Your environment, your home, and you as an individual. That's what sanitation has to do with our uh, sort of cleanliness. Now, cleanliness in basic science has to do to with cleaning our environment, cleaning our home, and being clean within ourselves. Now, we want to see how we can be clean in our environment. Number one, we have to make sure that the compound where we live, the surrounding where we live, we make sure that we keep it clean. Always sweep it. Always make sure that you remove dirt around your home. Make sure that you dispose these debts very well. Then, another thing that will make our environment clean is make sure that our sewage disposer, our toilets are well taken care of so that it does not pollute the environment. Remember, I am talking about being clean environmental wise. Then, don't litter your environment with debts. That's another way you can take care of your environment. Now, having talked about the environment, now let's go to our homes. How do we take care of our homes? Number one thing we do is try as much as possible to sweep your house on a daily basis. If possible, twice a day. We must clean, uh, we must sweep, mop, and clean it so that we can be free from disease-causing agents. These are microorganisms we cannot see with our eyes. If our environments are dirty, our homes are dirty, these microorganisms can go into our body. Before this time, when humans or many individuals do not know that uh, microorganisms can cause disease, they thought that diseases are caused by um, a sort of spiritistic way, which of course that was not true. Until recently, scientists find out that most of the things that causes us sicknesses in our body, it's because our environment, our body, our homes are dirty. So, in our home, we make sure that everywhere is well kept, everywhere is clean. That's why I said, sweep your house, mop your house, make sure the cobwebs in your house are taken off, and... Make sure you clean the furniture in the house. We have furniture. We have other things, the fridge, other things you find in your home. Make sure they are well kept. Then in our home, we have our kitchen. It should be our routine on a daily basis to clean the kitchen. Remember that the kitchen helps our food. And once our food is contaminated, our body will be contaminated. And this disease causing microorganism can go into the body and then causes harm to us. Nobody wants to be sick. All of us want to be active individuals. All of us want to be healthy. So, 
To an extent, we can maintain healthy lifestyle by taking care of our homes. Clean your kitchen. Make sure things you eat are not things that are already contaminated by death. Imagine you don't clean your kitchen for one week, for two weeks, and the dirty plates you used to eat, you didn't clean them. You find out that your kitchen will be a parade ground for cockroaches. So that is why cleanliness in our home is very, very important. Then, apart from cleaning our homes, sweeping it, cleaning our furnitures, going to our kitchen, clean our kitchen very well, what about our toilets? That is another major place, just like the kitchen, that microorganisms breed in. If you pass excrement and leave it there without cleaning or um, flushing it off, what do you think will happen? If flies go there and later patches on your food, what happens? So these are ways that disease-causing agents can get into our body. So our toilet, that's another place in our home we want to take care of. Make sure that the toilet areas are well cared for. We can use jig, we can use harpic, clean the sink, use good detergent, mop the ground, make sure the ceramic by the wall are well taken care of, and everything in the toilet area are clean. Then you can use disinfectant to clean and kill off the other germs that will be retained or left over. So that the microbe disease that will be uh, left there will be minimal. That way, we are helping our body to function well because these microorganisms will not be able to enter our body very easily. Then, in our home too, we have other areas we can clean, like our window blinds, the doors, the curtains, your bedspread. What do you do to them? At intervals, make sure they are clean, they are washed. Wash them so that everything in the home can be clean. Then, our clothes. I will talk about our personal clothes when I talk about personal hygiene. Remember, I've talked about the environmental hygiene, how we can keep our environment clean. Now, I am talking about in our personal homes, how we can keep them clean. So, make sure that everything in your home is well kept. Make sure they are clean. Now let's go to our own personal cleanliness or personal sanitation or personal hygiene. We are going to mention a number of things that will help us. Number one thing we want to talk about is the body. This body God has given to you and I. What should we do with the body? Some person stay for days without bathing. Hey, you are already inviting microorganisms to your body, students. So make sure you take care of your body. How do you take care of the body? Bait. Make sure you think your bath at least twice a day. In the morning before you step out, make sure you clean your body. Use sponge and soap to wash yourself. Then you can moisturize your, your skin with a good oil or a good cream. Then having done that, what about in the evening? After you've gone out, you've stressed for the day, sweat, and you have come in contact with people. You've shipped some persons. You've been in the bus with people. You have this body contact with people. What do you do? Will you go to sleep with that kind of body? That's to say you are like microorganisms to live in your skin. So the next thing you do is when you come back in the evening, make sure you wash up your body so that a minimal extent of this microorganism can go off our body. That's another way we can clean our body. Remember now I am talking about Personal cleanliness. We've talked about environmental. We've talked about home. Now it is we ourselves. So the first thing you have to do is yourself clean it. Then the clothes we put on, the undies we wear inside. What do we do to them? Do we wear them down and again without washing them? That could be a better place for microorganisms to breed, you know. So it is good for us to wash our undies, to wash our clothes, so that our body can be clean. Once your body is well clean, you've bathed, 
your clothes are clean, your undies are clean, then you are helping yourself to be uh, clean. Another thing in our body that we take care of is our nails. Then we have our toenails. So both our hands and our toes, we need to take care of them. Why do we need to take care of them? Because they are a good place where microorganisms breathe. If you keep your finger too long and they are not well clean, microorganisms can go live beneath them. And they can be disease-causing agent to our body. Imagine your, your nails are contaminated and you use the same hand to eat. Whatever you pass into the system, and once the microorganisms go into the system, if these microorganisms are damaging kind of microorganisms, it becomes harmful to our health. That is why you have to cut your nails, or if you want to keep them as an adult, make sure you take care of them, both your hands and your toes. That's another part of our body we take care of. Now what about our hair as individual, whether male or female? We need to cut them or wash them properly. Wash them so that there will not be retained dirt left inside. So we make sure we clean our hair. Wash your hair very well. Now, which other place again do we take care in our body? What about our teeth? We eat in the morning, we eat in the afternoon, we eat in the evening. How will it look like if we, after eating, we leave them like that? If you leave your teeth without brushing it for three days, you find out that the other coming out of your mouth will be very offensive. And that is a better place for microorganisms to go. So make sure you brush your teeth morning and evening. In the morning, you brush it. Before you go to bed, you brush it. You take care of your uh, teeth before you go to bed. That's another place of our body that we need to take care of. Then, one place of our body we always neglect is our hands. You go out, do you come back home and wash your hands? You want to eat. Even if it is biscuit. Even if it is anything. Make sure that before you put anything in your mouth, your hands should be washed. Because with the aid of your microscope, if you look at your hand, you find out that there are a lot of microorganisms in our hands that can cut um, disease-causing agents to our body. So make sure you wash your hand with soap and water. Scientists equally tell us that ashes that we use to can kill bacteria found in our body. So always wash your hand. You are in contact with people, you come back home, wash your hand. Even if you didn't come in contact with people, walking along the road or walking around your home, before you put anything in your mouth, make sure you wash your hand because that place is very essential. That's where you go. That is what goes through your mouth. So always make sure that your hands are clean. What about our feet? You've moved around the home. You've gone outside. You want to sleep. You take your dirty legs and just go to bed like that. Oh no, that's bad. Make sure you wash your feet. They should be properly washed before we go to bed. Remember I was talking about personal hygiene. I am under this number two that talk about method use in sanitation and cleanliness. We've talked about environmental. We have talked about our home. And we're talking about us as individual personal. Now we have talked about our hands. Now let me go to the clothes we wear. I have said that previously. I've touched it a little. But let me touch it again. Do we take care of our clothes? Do we wash our clothes? If we have not been washing our clothes always, make sure we wash our clothes. Clean your, wash your clothes so that you will look neat outwardly and healthy body wise. So our clothes will be, should be well taken care of. And the best friend we sleep to should be well taken care of. That's another thing we need to do. What about our shoes? Most of our shoes are covered. And you find out that some of these shoes are smelling. What do you need to do? We can reduce the smelling nature of our shoe. Put them in the sun. Peel lemon um, peel. And put them inside. That will absorb the smell. Make sure that our shoes are clean. Don't get dirty shoes inside your house. 
clean your shoes. So having said this, we have been able to cover areas where we can be clean in the environment, in our home, in our own body. We should be clean in this aspect. Now, let us talk about the importance or the advantages of sanitation or cleanliness. Why do we need to be clean? Number one reason why we need to be clean is it gives us healthy body. A healthy body is a healthy mind. A healthy mind is an active uh, body. You can do whatever you want to, but if you are not healthy, if you are sick, you can't function effectively. You can't do what you're supposed to do. So, one reason why we should be clean is because it makes us to be healthy. Since we've gotten rid of these bacteria, that's one reason. Then another thing is, it helps us to save money. Because the money you will use to go buy drugs to treat yourself, because you live a clean, healthy lifestyle, you won't fall sick as much as you're supposed to fall sick. So it helps you to save costs. The money you would have used, you will use it for other things. So another advantage is, it helps us to save money. Number one is it makes us healthy. Number two, it helps us to save money. Remember when you are healthy, you are happy. So it makes us to be happy. Once you are healthy, you are active, you are doing everything you can do at every particular time you want to do them, you are happy. Then you can pursue more happiness by trying to achieve your goal, your passion, your love, and your interest. But once you are not happy, uh, once you are not healthy, you can't be happy. You see people who are sick, they are always unhappy because they want to be healthy, to be active like those who are healthy. That's another advantage. Of being healthy then another thing is we reduce uh, the number of disease causing agent that comes into our body those microorganisms those bacteria that causes uh, sicknesses to our body or causes harm to our environment and to ourselves we reduce it to a minimal extent because if this microorganisms is coming through our kitchen and our kitchen is clean it's coming through the toilet, our toilet is clean. It's coming through our home and our home is clean. It's coming through our body and our body is clean. Then, to a minimal extent, it is going to be reduced. So it helps us to reduce disease-causing agents that can go through our body. Then, it makes us to look neat outwardly. It increases our self-esteem, our self-confidence. Imagine you wear dress clean. When you talk to people, you are not afraid that you have much odor. You are not afraid that your clothes are smelling. You are not afraid that people will look down on you because of one thing or the other. So it gives you confidence. It gives you the boost. It gives you the morale to come before others. So that's another thing that we stand to benefit if we are clean. So, in today's class, we've covered a number of things. We have seen what the meaning of cleanliness and sanitation is. We have seen the method we can use to clean our environment, our home and our body. We talked about the environmental sanitation, we talked about the home sanitation or cleanliness, then we talked about our personal cleanliness, hygiene or sanitation. Then we talked about the importance or the advantages of sanitation and cleanliness. Now, we've known these advantages. What if we don't do them? What will happen? The reverse of saving money. That case will not save money again. We will spend money in the hospital. If we are dirty, we won't be able to be confident doing what we are doing. People will look down on us and say, oh, this is smelling. Look at how she's looking tattered. She's looking dirty. That lowers your self-esteem. Then, those disease causing organisms that ordinarily we would have prevented, we will not prevent it again because they will just come to us because we are dirty. So, the, for every advantage that we have, that is the other way around of it. When we don't do it, we are going to suffer. Then, we equally, we spend highly on medical care. So, by and large, students, it was a pleasure having this class with you. Basic science. One thing is to learn. Another thing is to practice. So please go home, practice all these you have learned, and you have a good body, a healthy body, and a healthy mind. Student, if you have not already subscribed to our channel, do well 
to subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you for dropping by. Thank you for being part of us. Until our next class, I'll see you then.